Hello, church family. Well, we are still in quarantine because of the coronavirus or COVID-19, whatever you want to call it, or the bug that is going around. And uh, I'm pleased to report that things are going great at the church. Uh, things are going great in our community. Uh, we do have a lot of prayer points within our community in that uh, I guess there are now 18 confirmed cases of the coronavirus in Swanee County. And we also have now uh, some cases to our north and some cases to our, our south and to our west that were not there originally, you know, only a couple days ago. So we ne definitely need to be doing our due diligence to stay inside as much as possible. I was talking to one of our church members the other day, and one of the best things to do is if you have to go out and you're a family, designate one person to go out and kind of be the, the runner uh, for the family instead of taking everybody out or, you know, a couple people going out. Uh, one person should be designated kind of as the one to go out and then come back in, uh, wash hands, you know, do whatever you think is necessary. We typically, if we've been out uh, at a store or somewhere, we come home, we put our clothes immediately in the wash. And I've done more laundry over the last two weeks than I think I've done in 20 years. And, uh, but that's, you know, one good way to continue to, to break that cycle because we definitely want to continue flattening the curve as we go through this together. And we are in this together. We have to remember that this is a pandemic, meaning that everybody in the world is dealing with this. Uh, it's kind of hard to fathom how every, to imagine every church in the world is going through what we're going through as a church. You know, every family in the world is going through what we're going through. Some 154 countries, I think, uh, have been impacted or are being impacted by the coronavirus, which is just tremendous, you know, when you think about that and the number of people that it's impacting worldwide. But we continue to be positive and knowing that God is in control. And as we said yesterday, we are a people of praise. We are not a people to be pitied. We are a people of worship. Uh, we don't wither away at things like this. We just become more worshipful and we become more prayerful and we become more obedient and more sensitive to the leadership of the Lord Jesus Christ in our life. And right now, that's what we all need to do. When people say, you know, Pastor, what is the best thing for me to do? Well, pray, be with your family, pray with your family. Let this be an opportunity to grow spiritually, not only as an individual Christian, but grow spiritually as a family. You're probably doing things together more now than you've done in a long time, which is really, really good. Um, I know we have very little TV going on. It's We've been working on puzzles. We've been reading books together. We've been talking together. We've been going on walks together. We've been doing yard work together, you know, things to occupy our time. And uh, because whenever you're in quarantine, you can't really go anywhere. You got to find things to do. But uh, it has been a really rich time, I know, in our family. And this could be an opportunity for you and your family to uh, to really grow closer together and maybe have some conversations about topics that you normally wouldn't have. Uh, I know this has caused a lot of conversation in our family about what is a pandemic, you know, why is this so important and, you know, why God allows things like this to happen and, you know, how to deal with hurt and suffering in the world and in our, even right here in our own community. So, these are topics that our kids are, are asking. And, you know, as parents, you know, maybe, and I'm, this kind of update is a little different maybe than some of the others because there's just not a lot going on. Finally, we're at a little bit of a plateau in terms of the things changing every, seems like every minute. Uh, but we're kind of in coast mode now for the next few weeks. And it's very important that our kids may not be asking questions, but they're definitely wondering things. And uh, this would be a great opportunity maybe to ask your, your children or your grandchildren, you know, what do you think about all this that's going on? And, and it'd be a great opportunity for you to talk to them and encourage them because uh, as much as you are filled with anxiety about this, as much as you may be filled with uncertainty, they are as well. And they're looking to you for guidance. And this might be a fantastic opportunity. I know it's a fantastic opportunity for you uh, to just minister to them in a sweet and special way. And dads really step up to the plate and, and lead your, your family spiritually through this time. And, and moms just be that nurturing caregiver that God designed you guys to be, to just be able to um, tenderly speak into the lives of your kids and your grandkids. And I know some of you are doing some phenomenal things out there. Uh, I know all of you are doing something. I don't know about everybody, but I know some of you guys are doing some really cool things out there with your with one another, with your families. And, and that's what we should be doing at this time. We should be taking this opportunity to just uh, reflect upon the great blessings that God has given us as a people. And truly, uh, that will turn our OBs into amens. And that's really what we want to see happen in the midst of this. But it also is encouraging one another and touching base with one another, either by email or phone or text message and I know I've, I've been in dialogue with some of you guys and and different things and trying to keep up with you and I know our deacons have been doing call outs and uh, Pastor Morgan and Pastor Kevin have been call, doing call outs and just want to encourage everyone and just let you know that we're 
here for you and, and whatever way we can minister to you in this time. Although ministry right now looks very different and uh, it feels very different at times, ministry is still happening. And that is the most amazing uh, part of it. And uh, speaking of ministry and, uh, and communication, hopefully you all got a call through the One Call Now service on Saturday. Uh, what I'm asking you is if you have heard of anyone who did not get a call, if they said, I didn't get a call, or if you are watching this video and you didn't get a call, please call the church office in the morning and talk to Pauline so that we can make sure that we have the right information on the list. Like I said in our earlier video, sometimes numbers can get inverted, sometimes phone numbers change, and it doesn't always get communicated uh, to the church, so it doesn't get necessarily changed in our system. Because what we do is we upload the phone numbers from the computer system into the One Call Now service. So we want to make sure that all those numbers are correct. So if you didn't get a call on Saturday, because you should have, if you didn't, then uh, please let the church know. And if somebody, of course, says that, oh, I didn't get a call, let us know about that too so we can make sure that we check their information. So that when we do the next One Call Now, which will probably be over the course of this next few days, we'll try it again and, uh, and see what comes of that. So we want to make sure that everybody is getting communicated to as much as possible uh, during these times. So my prayer is continue that God's going to continue to use uh, our church amazing during this time. Again, I was so encouraged yesterday. Wow. We've had a tremendous response on Facebook Live and YouTube. I, I, I haven't even checked it today. I know between the two, when I went to bed last night, I think there have been over 300 views. That is phenomenal. We had folks in again in the chat yesterday morning during morning service that I jotted names down. I didn't know know a couple of them. Uh, we had uh, Miss Lynn Huggin was with us yesterday, which was really cool. Yesterday was her birthday, uh, so she got to worship with us as well, which was really cool. And uh, we had, we just had folks from all over. Our, our friend Pam up in uh, outside of Pittsburgh, uh, she was with us too, and it was so neat to see so many people coming on. And we're giving a little bit more time before the actual live stream starts in order to allow people to come on. Now, I know there was one question, and this question has come up a lot, so I thought probably in the update would be a good time to address it. Why isn't there more music? Okay, uh, Somebody even said yesterday during the little welcome thing, we should have music now. Uh, music is copyrighted, and YouTube and Facebook track copyright very, very carefully. Uh, they will fine you, or they will remove your video, or remove your channel. So we have to be very careful what kind of music we do. We do this little light of mine, and that's okay because it's we, we're singing it. Uh, it's it's not a um, it's a it's an ear arrangement <laughs> kind of call it that. We change the words so it's altered enough that it doesn't seem to be catching. But we do not have the copyright to be able to pr play music across a, a broad spectrum audience like an online audience. Uh, we do not have that copyright. And uh, so we can play music in the church and you can hear it in church, but it cannot be broadcasted. Okay, so that's the reason why there's very little music and many times no music. Um, when I do a little video clip, uh, there will be a little bit of music in it. That That is ro what is called royalty free music. And that is music that you can download for free. Also, it is less than 30 seconds. So you get by with it if the music is less than 30 seconds. So those clips are only about 29 seconds long. So to answer some of your questions, that's the reason why we don't have more music. And uh, it's because we, we do not, we have to keep the law. We have to be obedient to the law. And, uh, you know, the Bible says, give unto Caesar what is Caesar's and give unto God what is God's. Well, Caesar says, so to speak, that is against the law for us to do that. So we are not going to. We are going to keep the high ground. So if anybody, so if you want songs, sing it. <laughs> you sing it right there in your living room, right wherever you are, you know, before church starts. Sing a song. After service, sing a song, whatever you want to do. Uh, nothing's keeping you from doing it in your house. And uh, so, or turn on the radio, whatever you want to do. We just can't do it in the live stream. <laughs> okay. So I just wanted to clarify that so that you guys didn't think that we didn't want to play any music because I'd love to have more music, but we just can't. So doxology also is one that we play, but that is a publicly recognized song too. It's a, called a royalty-free tune, so it doesn't get uh, it doesn't violate copyright. But anything contemporary, most music, you know, it it would violate copyright, and we don't want to do that. We want to make sure that we be obedient and that we keep the high ground as a church. So that answers that question. Uh, in terms of Easter, as I had said earlier, Easter is we're going to have uh, an Easter Sunday morning service at eleven o'clock. We're also, I'm also going to do a Good Friday service. So keep an eye on that as more announcements come for Good Friday. And I'm just going to go ahead and give you a heads up. 
I just might do something for sunrise. Yeah, I, you know, we had talked about, we were thinking about doing the drive up church, which that fell through. We had thought about doing a nine o'clock service because, it, hey, it would be kind of between sunrise. We have had a sunrise service at this church as long as I have pastored this church. And I believe they had them before I was pastor here. So for this would be the 21st year. So for 21, 20 years now, we've had a sunrise service. I wanted, we're going to do something. It'll, I'll probably won't even be at the church. I may be doing it in my backyard, but I do want to have a few minutes where I'm going to go live. I, and kind of deciding on the time. And that's one of the reasons why I'm going to do the call out because I haven't exactly decided on the time. I'm probably thinking somewhere around seven o'clock, 7 a.m., somewhere around there. Um, but I'll let you guys know, because I'll be doing another pastor update, but I wanted to give you guys a heads up that we are going to be doing the Good Friday uh, service, and then that'll be a live stream, unless the weather's really bad, which it shouldn't, it's, it's looking pretty good, uh, then it'll be a live stream, otherwise it'll be an upload. And the second thing is, is doing something for uh, sunrise service, wouldn't be anything elaborate, but just to say, you know what, we had a sunrise service at First Baptist Church of Downing Park, and I just believe that's very, very important. And also that 11 o'clock on Sunday morning will be our Easter uh, message. So I'm excited about it. I'm excited always to preach about the resurrection because that's where our gifts are, our hopes there. Is there's so much about the resurrection and I'm so excited. Now, something else I'm going to be doing is uh, after this video, I'm also going to be doing another video uh, that I'm going to upload tonight. So I'm going to upload this one first and then I'm going to upload another one on, I'm going to go through the week of Passion Week. What would day one, day two, day three, day four, day five, and so forth look like? And what does it look like in the scripture? And I think that'll be just something kind of interesting for some of you who have never done that. Kind of like what has happened? We talk about Palm Sunday, and then we get to Easter Sunday, and we have Good Friday. And then if you're from an Episcopalian, Advent Christian, Roman Catholic background, you're a Monday, Thursday. What's all of that about? We're just going to take a few minutes and just talk about what happened and, and look, at, look it up in Scripture, what happened during the Passion Week. And so I'm going to upload a video each day as it pertains to that. So that'll kind of keep you plugged in. Also, maybe give you some more stuff to think about, do some Bible study about, and maybe even talk about as a family as we as we go through this Passion Week this week. So that's really all I have for the Pastor's Update right now, and I'll be doing another one later in the week. Uh, but right now, things are kind of holding their own. We're kind of running a, a smooth course. Uh, thank you all for your just continued patience and your prayers and your giving. Uh, we, we, our, your giving has been amazing. I, I hope that all the, uh, the ways in which we've set up between text to give and PayPal and you know bringing in your check or mailing it in has worked for you. Uh, they've been very convenient for us. It is it's been it's been kind of interesting for bookkeeping for Brother Earl, but because it, it's kind of coming in from all these different directions. But you guys have been so faithful, and we got that big old insurance bill today. It came in that's due at the end of the month. Oh boy, our liability insurance. I think it was twenty nine hundred dollars in one bill. So y'all don't give up giving now. And uh, and I told you guys the other day I have a little bit of a challenge for you, but I'm I'm not going to unveil it yet. Uh, I'm gonna, it's going to be a little bit later in the month, but uh, I do have a challenge I want to give to you that's going to not only, I believe, impact and benefit our church family, but also will be able to benefit uh, those outside of our church family as well. And I'll be talking more about that. So there's my pastor's update. Be looking. I'm going to upload this video first, so I'll be looking for another video a little bit later uh, tonight uh, as we talk about week or day one. Uh, technically, I guess it would be day two because day one would be the... Uh, would actually be uh, Palm Sunday, and we, we covered that yesterday. So technically, this would be day two. We go from the uh, triumphal entry into where would Jesus be on day two. So I'll upload that video a little bit later tonight. But in the meantime, I want to go ahead and uh, dis you know, dismiss us, close us in prayer, pray for us, and continue lifting up our church family. We've got an amazing church family that is just doing some incredible ministry during this time. So let's keep on keeping on because yo, I believe we ain't seen nothing yet. Amen. Let's pray. Father, I just thank you for your love for us and your many blessings upon us, God, as a people. And Lord, even in the midst of all this uncertainty, Lord, we know that you are there and you are with us always. And Father God, we just lift up this our world to you, our nation, our community to you, our state. 
And Father God, we just pray against this sickness in Jesus' name. We pray for healing across our land. And Father God, we know that you're doing a great work even in the midst of all of this. And Lord, we just lift up those that are that have lost loved ones as a result of this virus, those that are sick right now. Father God, we just ask, Lord, that your healing and that your tender mercies would be upon them. Lord, we just want to thank you for all that you've given us, for all that you do for us every day. And we just love you, Lord, and allow us to continue to be about ministry as you send us. We ask in Jesus' name, amen. All right, guys, that's it for the pastor's update today. And don't forget what your mama told you. Wash your hands. <laughs> Bye-bye.